Hey, Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now focusing my practice on longevity and bone health. Have you been diagnosed with osteoporosis or osteopenia, and you're looking at every possible way to help build bone, and you've found that a weighted vest is the right way to do it? Well, stick around, because I'm gonna go through some of the research that kind of supports the use of a weighted vest. I say that very carefully because there is some literature that supports it, but there's some that doesn't and you might want to know the difference and when you should wear it, how long you should wear it, so stick around. All right, so in general, what is the entire purpose behind wearing a weighted vest? It all comes down to this idea of Wolf's Law. So we learned this in medical school and definitely we learned this in orthopedics that bones respond to stress. Now, we talk about that a lot when it comes to healing bones, but it's really important when it comes to building bone and your bone health. So, why wear a weighted vest? Because a weighted vest is gonna add more stress, the good kind of stress, to your bones, and that will help, in theory, increase bone density and quality over time. But here's the thing, not everybody should wear a weighted vest. And this is where I get really worried about seeing recommendations online and social media and even on YouTube that says that pretty much everybody should wear a weighted vest. The truth is that if you have severe osteoporosis, definitely if you've recently had a vertebral fracture, possibly if you've ever had a vertebral fracture, this might not be the best tool for you. I can't tell you what's right for you. I can only tell you what I tell my patients in general. So if you are worried about it, ask your care team, but I'm gonna go through some of the things that I talk to my patients about. All right, so the first study I wanna talk about is called the Erlanger Fitness Osteoporosis Study. This is a study that was published in 2004. And what I like about this study is that it was a really long trial as far as fitness and exercise trials go. It was over two years long, so 26 months. And what was cool about it is that they did use a weighted vest in the intervention and they had a control group. So they had people that weren't doing the exercise and then they had people that were doing the exercise with weighted vests. And the outcomes were good. The patients that were in the intervention trial maintained or improved their bone mineral density, whereas those that were in the control group lost bone mineral density over time, which is what you would expect if they're not doing any exercise. The problem is, is that they didn't have a third arm that just did exercise without the weighted vest. So we don't really know, was the weighted vest really the intervention that made the difference, or was it the exercise alone? And they did aerobics, they did impact, and they did strength training. So it's kind of hard to tell. And some of the exercise alone studies showed actually better improvement than this study showed from a bone mineral density perspective. Okay, so the next two studies kind of followed the same trend. They're newer though, so there's a 2016 study and a 2017 study. Now they both have control groups that didn't do exercise and then relatively long interventions that included different forms of exercise, different frequency, different duration, but with a weighted vest. And both of them showed improvement compared to control. But again, there was no study arm that just did exercise. So we really again don't know, is it the exercise alone or did the weighted vest have a significant impact there? All right, now the last study I wanna show you was actually the study that I was looking for in researching weighted vests. Because people have been recommending weighted vests for as long as I've been in the bone health field. So this 2012 study actually had three arms, like I wanted, a control group, an intervention group with a weighted vest, and an intervention group without a weighted vest. Now, every study has potential weaknesses in how it's designed, this one, I would argue that the intervention time period was way too short. It was only six weeks. I would not expect to see significant bone changes in six weeks. But nevertheless, they still did bone turnover markers, older ones, but still reasonable. So we're looking at bone turnover markers. How quickly are you losing bone? How quickly are you gaining bone? And they looked at bone mineral density after a six week trial. So they did this six week trial. The participants exercised for 30 minutes, three days a week and it was really just walking with the weighted vest, which is a good intervention to see if there's a difference, but maybe not the only thing you should do with your weighted vest, we'll see. In this trial, they said in the conclusion that there was no statistically significant difference between the weighted vest group and the exercise group, but that both groups did better than the control group, meaning that exercise better than no exercise. I think we've seen that in every study, right? And they go on to say that the weighted vest group over the other exercise group had more improvement in balance and motor control, which is important for helping to prevent falls. 
However, if you look at this chart, what you can see here is that the NTX, which is an older version of the lab that we use called CTX, but the NTX is a marker of, of bone breakdown. So we're looking at how quickly are you losing bone. And what you can see is that there is a trend towards significance in the weighted vest versus the non-weighted vest exercise group, meaning that the NTX came down more in the weighted vest group than did the other exercise group. And certainly uh, both came down more than the control group. So what that tells me is that if, if they had gone on for three months, six months, 12 months, uh, in the intervention that likely we would have seen a difference. Now I can't say that for sure, but I could say that potentially we're gonna see that difference. So what does the research tell me about weighted vests? It tells me that they are an effective tool. They are probably not the magic bullet. They are not gonna solve your bone health problem on its own, but what they can do is be a tool that you can add to your armamentarium if it's safe for you to do so. If you're liking this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so that we can send you notifications when we have new content available. Secondly, if you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share this with them so that they can continue to learn and grow on their own bone health journey. And lastly, if you wanna know more about how we manage osteoporosis or other ways that you can manage bone health on your own, sign up for our free masterclass in the description below. So what should this vest look like? Does it need to look like this one? Are there other types out there? Well, there are a whole bunch of types out there. So there are some uh, that are this form. So this is a kind of a big metal plate that goes in the front, big metal plate on the back. You can put a lot of weight in a vest like this. This particular vest has 40 pounds on it, which is way more than probably anybody watching this video needs. I use this as, as more of a fitness tool, not so much uh, as an approach to improve my bone health but this can be used for that same thing, but with a lighter weight. The plates usually come separate from the vest themselves, um, and the plates can be all the way down to, I think they sell them, you know, one or two pound increments. So they can get very, very light. Now, as far as how much weight to put in your vest, it's gonna really vary on your unique situation. This is where having some guidance can be really helpful. What I tell my patients is that unless they've had a recent vertebral fracture, uh, or a vertebral fracture at all, or they have severe osteoporosis and are at extreme risk, then it's probably safe to start with potentially 5%, up to 10%, but again, it depends on their unique scenario. 10% of your body weight is still a significant amount of weight to move around, particularly if you're wearing it for a prolonged period of time. Now, if you look at the studies, the, the participants of the studies really only wore the vest for the duration of the exercise. There are other studies where they simply wore the vest around. Uh, they would wear the vest on average, you know, four, five, six hours throughout the day to do activities of daily living. And that's probably okay. I would be a little bit worried about getting into an awkward position though, you know, getting into those positions that you're not supposed to be in um, with extra weight on your spine, that would concern me. So I think being very directed about what you're doing, doing a very specific exercise, going outside, going for a walk. Um, you know, if you're gonna do exercises like uh, squats, uh, lunges, you could also do impact training. Now I say this very carefully, and when I talk to my patients about this, uh, you have to be very careful about how you do this. There are several studies that look at impact training, and we'll do another video on rebound training, specifically using trampolines. The problem is, is that if you get into an awkward position with extra weight on your body, and you're trying to do some form of impact, there, obviously the risk for, for injury goes up there. So I would recommend if you're gonna try to do that, probably work with a trainer, at least initially, to make sure that you're doing, doing it well, you're doing it with good form, and that you're not gonna hurt yourself. But adding impact to a weighted vest is probably going to exponentially improve your gains from a bone mineral density perspective. So in conclusion, is the weighted vest the magic pill for osteoporosis? I don't think so. I think it's a tool. And when we create plans for people, we are pulling so many different levers that this is just simply one of them. And if you have access to one, that's great. Uh, if you have the resources for one, start light, see how it feels. This is what I tell my patients. And I have some people that love it, some people that don't wanna wear it. As I mentioned before, there are different forms. So there are the, the plate form like this, and then there's some that are more like a vest, and then you have pockets around the waist, potentially can take some pressure off of your chest. It just depends on what you're looking for and how much weight you wanna carry. All right, that's all I have on weighted vests. If you like this information, again, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications. If you wanna learn more about how we manage osteoporosis or other things that you can do on your own, 
look for the link in the masterclass below. You can sign up for this free masterclass and again, learn about all these tips and tricks that you can do on your own, on your own bone health journey. Finally, I wanna hear from you. I love comments on YouTube. We get such great interactions. We're educating people through this platform, pointing them in the right direction of resources. So please, if you have questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you wanna hear about other topics, please leave that too. Weighted vest is the most common question that I've had over the last month, and that's why we created this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.